Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Dennis Beck and uh, I've investigated ball organization in terms of Robocop humanoid soccer. Uh, the paper is based on my work uh, of my bachelor thesis. Um, Pablo Barros and Cornelius uh, Weber are my advisors. And Stefan Lamter um, is the professor and the head of uh, knowledge technology where I write my thesis. Okay, let's come to the motivation. Uh, the new rules in uh, Robocop Humanoid Soccer introduce multicolor balls and traditional algorithms uh, struggle with the new multicolor balls because, as you can see, uh, when the ball is moving or when the ball is not moving, uh, the color distribution is very, very hard. And uh, yeah, that led to a motivation for neural solutions because our hypothesis was that neural solutions should be able to learn features of the ball and should be able to locate the ball um, uh, in dependency of uh, the features that are learned, so that it can localize the ball uh, when it's moving or when it's not moving in different balls. Okay, so in order to learn those features, we've recorded a data set. The first data set you can see in the first row, uh, that's recorded in our lab at the University at Hamburg. At Hamburg. Uh, and uh, the second data set um, was recorded here at the RoboCup 2016. Okay, this is our proposed architecture. Um, I can't go too hard into detail because of the time limit, but um, it's a convolutional neural network. Uh, in the first uh, layers, the convolution happens. That's basically uh, convolving the 2D spatial information of one image, and we are feeding the whole image of the camera input uh, into the model. No pre-processing at all is happening there. And uh, additionally to the convolution, um, we are doing max pooling. That's basically picking interesting features out of the convolution and um, yeah, a method of nonlinear downsampling uh, so that the information gets smaller in size uh, um, for predicting in the uh, last layers. The last layers are fully connected. You can see this uh, where the orange vector is displayed. This is one linearized vector, and uh, the last layers are classifying this layer. We have two different streams, one for the x and one for the y output, that's basically classifying the x and y position of the ball. Um, model 1 was working on the full-size image, and uh, apparently our robots uh, do not have much computational power, so working on an 800 by 600 dimensional image uh, is too hard for them. Uh, therefore, we invented model 2, uh, model 2 works on downscale images, 200 by 150 in size, and uh, this actually runs on our robots. It uh, has a performance of about 3 to 4 frames per second, uh, so it's basically enough to localize the ball in different scenes. Um, the only thing we changed uh, was one last pooling step, because the information in the third layer, as you can see, is already downscaled to 50 by 38 uh, in dimensions. And uh, this is already so small that balls that are uh, at a far distance, like 5-6 meters to the camera, are so tiny that the network cannot uh, classify them and localize them anymore. So we just did two pooling layers. Um, the teaching signal. Um, normally, um, neural networks are classified with a one-hop vector. So for an 800-dimensional vector for the x-dimension, uh, one um, vector would be activated, one value of the vector. In this image, uh, uh, 412, so there would be one activation. But instead of uh, taking um, one hot encoded vectors, we decided to go for probability distributions. This has uh, several benefits. Um, and one of them is that we can evaluate uh, our data set better and our model. Uh, we're taking a top 11 error rate for this. And basically, um, this compares the top 11 activations out of our network with our teaching signal. And uh, because the Gaussian distribution is symmetric in its shape, uh, this guarantees the activation to be 5 pixels around the center of the ball. And uh, additionally, um, when the distribution is well shaped, uh, this also indicates that the noise on the process is pretty low. And yeah, and the distribution benefits um, uh, are that uh, the network converges faster, the test data set converges faster, um, because uh, the pixel precise learning is pretty hard for the network and it's not uh, necessary at all. Um, and 
yeah, it leaves more possibilities for the network uh, of uh, and neurons to co-adapting to each other. Um, with the probability distribution, the network always has like 20, 30 neurons that are activated in the last layer, and that's much harder for the network to fall into local minima. That was already shown by Laurel et al., and we could uh, yeah, prove uh, that this is true. Uh, this is one output example of our network. You can see the input image in the upper left, the distribution, so the X and the Y output. This is linear output, it's not downscaled at the moment. For downscaling the input, um, we are normalizing it with a softmax. Uh, you will see this later on. Um, and uh, in the second row, you can see the heat maps for X and Y and the combined heat map. This is already the classification of our network. And the small red dots are indicating the center of the network, as well as uh, the red lines in the upper right section of the figure. Yeah, and because the video is cooler than just some image, I've prepared some videos. Uh, these are actual test uh, images. Uh, we rec uh, recorded them um, on field one, while all training images were recorded on field two or three, and we t uh, took uh, different actors uh, to kick the ball, so we tried to add as much variation as possible. And the network has none of the actors, nor the fields, nor anything else seen before, so it's completely test activations here. And uh, yeah, the network is able to localize the ball uh, pretty precisely. Uh, then the ball is uh, really far away, like here. It's always some pixels off because, as I mentioned, the activations are really uh, small in size, 30 by, uh, 50 by 38 uh, in, in size, and it's so small that the uh, network is always some pixels off. But when it's getting, uh, when, but then the ball gets nearer to the camera, uh, you can see that the activation is really accurate again. Uh, yeah, and on the left side you can see the softmax, this, uh, this is the uh, non-linear downscaling, and on the right side the linear output. There are, uh, you can already see the benefit of the softmax because it's much more spiky and uh, less noisy. Okay, coming to the future work, 
um, very the distribution standard deviation can improve the results. At the moment, uh, we label our images and just take the center of the ball. So, uh, no matter if the ball is far away or really near to the camera, the probability distribution at the moment always has the same width. And that's not really good because when the network, uh, when the ball is uh, far away, the network looks not only at the ball but also at the environment, like plus minus five, ten pixels. And then the ball is really near to the camera. Uh, the network always classifies something on the surface of the ball rather than the whole ball. So blending the width of the standard deviation um, of our normal distributions can really increase our results. And we are working at the moment on uh, labeling our uh, training data sets with bounding boxes um, to implement this. And another thing is uh, changes in colors and lighting, which lower the accuracy, obviously. Um, not tremendously, but they do. And uh, normal color stabilization should improve these results to make the network really learn the features of the ball rather than anything of the environment to really focus on, on the ball and not focus on the green of uh, the field or something like that. Okay, thank you for your attention. It was a pleasure for me to be here, and uh, if you have any further questions, my mail is here. You can read the paper uh, at our site. Uh, you can come to me after the talk. Um, and uh, in one week, I'm having the defense of my bachelor's thesis, and after this, I will publish the code on GitHub and also the thesis. If someone is interested. Thank you. Um, we can get some questions. Um, uh, what processor do you use for this? It's a robot live in the game, right? Um, we haven't used it live in the game so far because we haven't integrated this in our software. So I were using um, yeah custom software for for the robots to evaluate this data. Okay. So what what what? Uh, so it was not on a processor on, on, on a robot? Uh, of course it was, it was. Ah, okay, what pr processor was that? Um, it's an old droid. Um, I don't know the exact specifications. It's a Samsung Exynos, um, uh, an ARM processor with uh, four strong cores and four lower cores. I think it's the same one in the Samsung Galaxy S5 or something like that. Uh, actually, I have two two questions. Yeah. Uh, one of those is: uh, Have you had any results with the new ball this year? And the second one is: uh, uh, To to train a, a deep neural networks, you usually use a GPU, and then you pass the, the training network in, inside the row. It's correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how how long does it take to, to train this ball? How much images did you? Oh, yeah. Good question. Good question. Um, another benefit of the architecture, which is split it into two streams, is that it can be trained um, on two GPUs in parallel. And actually we did this on the cluster, uh, so it was uh, one dual GPU card from NVIDIA, and um, a whole training set for the big network takes about 10 hours, while the small network uh, takes about 2 hours to train. And uh, for your second question, um, actually the video which I showed um, is the new ball from here. So we have problems with the, uh, the this is the pattern of the, the pattern of this, this ball. Uh, how do you evaluate this uh, these results? Um, I think I didn't get your question. Uh, um, what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, when we are competing in RoboCup, uh, yeah. we have this uh, two setup days to to uh, to train a, an algorithm to to identify the ball. Uh, do, do you think that this this time is feasible? Is it's okay to to use this this algorithm? Ah, yeah, I think I get your question. Um, uh, the network is actually um, quite data efficient. Um, the first data set is just like 1000 images and the second one which I've recorded here is like 2000 images. So labeling these images, I've created a little software for this, just took like 30 minutes. And uh, it's not like that the network needs 100,000 images or something like that to converge and uh, uh, show all these results. So yes, this can actually be used. 
uh, in competitions and uh, yes, its training time is uh, quite short and you don't need much images to train it. Okay, thank you. Okay.